CBS Sports welcomes you to the following presentation of the National Football League. Sixty men away from glory. The time is now. It's our time. It's surreal. We gotta make it count. We're finally here. Always wanted to touch that trophy. Never take this for granted. Let's be relentless. Do whatever it takes. Get this, baby. Well, I can't believe this is happening. This is something we never dreamed of. It could be a once in a lifetime opportunity. Let's win this. 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 And again, welcome back to the Mercedes Benz Superdome and Jim Nance, Bill Sims. If your name wasn't Sims and it was Harbaugh instead, so you were coaching one of these two teams, what would you tell them here at the very start? Well, I think for the players, this is an emotional time, no doubt about it. They've been waiting for it for two weeks. So make sure you don't overplay a play on the offense or defense and make a big mistake that actually could cost you the game early. Tonight's game being broadcast in Spanish. We're available using the SAP button on your television. Looking at LaMichael James, rookie second rounder out of Oregon. Had a touchdown in the NFC Championship game against Atlanta. And there's a rookie who's been quite a difference maker this season for the Ravens. Three game winning kicks, including the one from 47 yards at Denver to end the fourth longest game in NFL history, Justin Tucker. It's Tucker driving it all the way to the back of the end zone and through the end zone, bringing Kaepernick out to the 20. The 25-year-old second-year quarterback who's been the hot buzz around the NFL this past month. Huge performance against Green Bay and led him back from 17 down against Atlanta. His offensive line has been intact all season. Not missed a single start that first five. Crabtree has really been a presence since Kaepernick took over. They start with two tight ends, Davis and Walker. And right away from the pistol. Play action and thrown it down the field. And he's got his man. It's Vernon Davis with the catch and a gain of 20 with Pollard there to defend. There was a flag. And the Niners are coming back. Illegal formation. Offense. The tight end, number 85, was covered up by the wideout. Five-yard penalty. Replay. First down. Yeah, Jim, I could see it when they came out. Here's a wide receiver covering the end man on the line of scrimmage, which was the tight end. And when I was up here, I said, looks like an illegal formation. And they threw the flag on it. Wipes out a 20-yard gain. First and 15. <laughs> now they run at the floor. And he's stuck. No gain. Ellerby there to meet him. The Ravens defense has come together come playoff time. Healthy. Not a one of the best on that defensive front. Ray Lewis in his years as a Raven. 27 years overall as a football player. It ends at the end of today. His fabulous football career. And Reed is back home in his city of New Orleans where he was raised. Second and 15. He split out Walker to the right. Kaepernick with a fake. Jones is deck. And there's a sideline pass. Incomplete. It's ruled to Walker. Boy, right off from the start, Jim. Just what we kind of talked about. A play they've been practicing all week long, just lining up. And the 49ers line up wrong. Take away a big play. Of course, anytime you have a quarterback like Colin Kaepernick, an excellent thrower on the run, early in the game, get him outside, easy throws, nerves do not become a part of it, but nobody open for him that time. Backed up into third and 15. <laughs> and they go draw. Gore hurdles ahead, but picks up only three. Ran into the arms of Ray Lewis. Well, that's a call for the Super Bowl right there, being very conservative. Greg Roman, offensive coordinator for the 49ers, 
knowing the game, the emotions, and just realizing pretty tough to catch up or to pick up a first down in that situation. An all-pro punter, Andy Lee, to send it down to the all-pro returner of the Ravens, Jacoby Jones. Jones, he's got separation here. As he's out across the 40 and near midfield. Excellent starting point coming up for Baltimore. Here comes Joe Flacco. What a postseason. Without a mistake, eight touchdowns, no picks. Taking leadership of this team. His line got shifted around come playoff time. What a difference that's made. McKinney, who did not start all regular season, been great at left tackle or moved to the right side. Then you got some game breakers like Torrey Smith and Ray Rice and Antoine Bolden. And an X Factor in Dennis Pitta who sees a lot of action. Rip him, rip him. They got Jacoby Jones in. Gonna open up with three wideouts. They remove Rice now from the backfield. And Flacco dumps it to Vontae Leach. He takes it over to the Niners side of the field and picks up about eight. Really good job by the Ravens. Why did they come out in three wide receivers, Jim? They want to spread the defense. They got the best pass rusher for the 49ers, Alden Smith, out in space on a wide receiver, not near the line of scrimmage. Everybody covered. Good job of dropping it off by Joe Flacco. Two tight ends, second and two. And it's Rice. Going ahead for a first down. Gain of four. Running right at that San Francisco defensive front that's led by Justin Smith, the heart and soul of the 49ers defense. What a linebacking group they have with Patrick Willis, an all-pro every year in the league. And some heavy hitters at safety, Goldson and Whitner. First and ten from the San Francisco, 39. And Flacco heaves it. Open man, and he's got Smith. Corey Smith with the catch. That's the time the throw gets his defense is on first down. Everybody's having great success against lately against their the 49er defense. Torrey Smith, when that football was thrown, I thought that was going to be a little too high. But he's tall and he attacks the football while it's in the in the air and catching the football. Why a defender is near, that has really helped the Ravens here late. And into the red zone from the 19, and there's a nice def defensive play by Ahmad Brooks. In on Rice, holds him to a yard. Well, Ahmad Brooks on the outside is a fast guy. Number 55, top of your screen, not blocked. They thought the fake reverse would get him out of there. He had nothing to do with that. He attacked Ray Rice. Second and nine, play action, Flacco in trouble. Rolls out, throws it toward the end zone and through the end zone. McDonald was uh, chasing after Flacco at first. Pass thrown in the area of Torrey Smith. Well, there's nobody open. Look at the two wide receivers. They are basically double covered. The Baltimore Ravens trying to catch them off guard, going for the score that time, but the San Francisco 49ers, the one thing they do, of course, don't want to do is give up the big pass plays down the field, playing very safe. There you see the last hey, eight Rocco, Rocco. red zone drives, yeah. eight touchdowns Rocco. produced. Third and nine. Flags to the end zone, over the head of Dennis Pitta, but a flag might have been a jump. Like maybe Brooks was offsides for the 49ers. Offside. Defense, number 55. Five-yard penalty. We play third down. Joe Flacco didn't look like he changed his snap count. It's Brooks because he's inside just trying to get a jump. A little different position for him. Usually he's outside. That time over the center. A little too impatient here early in the game. Five wides. Dixon, wide to the right, it's Rice at the bottom of the screen, third and four. 
from the 13. Flacco, end zone battle, and he's got a touchdown! And Quan Bolden! Touchdown, Baltimore! Not a surprise when you look at this. Oh, it's a nice fake inside by Anquan Bolden. He thinks he gets Navarro Bowman watching, thinking he's going across the field. He takes it right up. And, Jim, I've heard it a thousand times this week. When the Ravens get inside that 10-yard line or near it, they're looking to throw the football to Anquan Bolden. Back that play worked for a touchdown against the Patriots in the AFC title. The extra point is good. What a postseason for Bolden, his fourth touchdown catch in the playoffs. Flacco takes him down the field, and the Ravens put up a touchdown on their first drive. Six-play drive. You mentioned Bolden has four touchdowns in the playoffs. That was after four all regular season long. Playing in his second Super Bowl was with the Cardinals a few years back. Well, a drive like that is sure calm the nerves of the football team for the Baltimore Ravens. And it really does. I know it's early in the first quarter, but right away it puts pressure on the San Francisco 49ers. And the sucker kick. This time will take a knee. So a three and out the first time the Niners had it. Meanwhile, the Ravens march down, get this touchdown. It was verified. He held it on, held on to it all the way through it. For the touchdown. Super Bowl 47 on CBS Sports is sponsored by the new smooth and distinctive Budweiser Black Crown. Hyundai, build your dream team with the new seven passenger Santa Fe from Hyundai. And by Doritos, congratulating our Crash the Super Bowl winners. Jim Nance and Phil Sims back here in New Orleans. 49ers being behind. Oh, well, that's been part of the recipe during the playoffs behind early against Green Bay and was down 17 to Atlanta on the road overcame it all of two maybe a loss of a yard well Jim let's go real quick Anquan Bolden the inside the three receivers why I want to show you this the 49ers defense has really struggled when teams spread them out so the Ravens who don't do it a lot uh, said today they will let it go and spread them out now the Niners spread it out Kaepernick from under center middle of the field and he's got his man Crabtree Nice grab by Michael Crabtree and runs it out for a total of 19. Boy, Michael Crabtree in the slot inside. The same route we just saw Anquan Bolden run. Came into a middle linebacker, makes a fake. Watch the fake, goes back inside. And Ray Lewis just not fast enough to readjust. We've got two Kurafu in the backfield, three backs in all. And that is a tackle again right at the line of scrimmage. Gore. Met by Ellerby, no gain. Watch the Super Bowl with exclusive online camera angles, including the All-22 and Fan Choice cameras. Check it out now, live at cbsports.com slash Super Bowl. So much talk about the option game, the zone read. Of course, Jim, you and I, we brought it up to the Baltimore Ravens and players and coaches, and they go, everybody makes mistakes. They don't know what they're doing. We know how defensive we will be ready for today. Gore with four carries for only two yards. On second and ten, it's Gore again. Shifts past the first wave and runs it out for about nine. Anthony Davis with a nice block. Well, this is about Frank Gore just making people miss. Watch Danell Ellerby, the inside linebacker. They got the play, comes up to make the tackle. Frank Gore, many years in the league, a lot of injuries. Still, quick feet. 
Third and two. Bonus. 47. And Kaepernick takes off with it. Has the first down. And all the way to the Ravens, 43. He ran right behind Mike Upati. Picks up nine in the first. Yeah, Mike Upati coming around. Delaney Walker inside. And that was a good fake by Colin Kaepernick. Acting like he was going to throw it outside quick to his left. And then when he takes off straight ahead, look at those blocks. Upati, Delaney Walker. London. On first down, Kaepernick now runs it down to the 37. A gain of seven. Well, this is what you got to worry about. You're a pass rusher against Colin Kaepernick. You've got to stay in your lane. That time, Aloli Nata, no, it was Terrence Cody, gets pushed out of the way. Nobody open down the field, so he'll take off. To me, he's more dangerous as a scrambler than he is when they run all the zone read plays. Second and three, they're going to bring back Miller. On the wing. Kaepernick changing it up now. Goes Gore. And Gore has another first down. Four-yard gain for Gore, who's slipped a couple of times before he's been hit. Yeah, that Jim, but he's still quick. He gets again, gets by Ray Lewis. And the carry-out fake by Colin Kaepernick. You know, you keep hearing everybody say, well, you got to hit the quarterback. And I keep seeing you show me the opportunities to, then you take advantage of it. But Ray Lewis in the hole, nobody blocking him. Can't bring down Frank Gore. They picked up now three first downs on this drive. And Kaepernick down the middle of the field. And at the 10, he's got Vernon Davis. And Ed Reed's upset about it. Well, Vernon Davis, probably the fastest tight end in the NFL, number 85. And Danelle Ellerby just takes a bad angle at it. And Ed Reed saw it coming all the way, but can't get there in time. And you keep talking about... Colin Kaepernick, strong arm, no doubt about it, but I think he has excellent touch on the football. That time, over the linebackers, in front of Ed Reed. I tell you, who helped make that play happen, Gore picked up a blitzing Bernard Pollard to give Kaepernick the time he needed. 24-yard gain and first and goal from the eight. Ted Ginn in the game, but they go up the middle. They try to use him as a decoy. The ball is out, but the whistle... And the ball spotted at the eight for no gain for Gore. I think one of the things you've got to look for in this game, and I thought would be a big key opponent, well, there's a couple. Taking away the first dive play by the running back before Colin Kaepernick maybe decides to take off with it. But does the Baltimore Ravens defense have enough speed to react in space? And so far, that answer is no, because they've had unblocked guys this time. You saw they're working on Vernon Davis on the sideline, the man who put him inside the 10. Randy Moss in the slot to the right, second and goal. And Kaepernick tucks it under, now throws, and oh, it's incomplete. Off the fingertips of Crabtree. I think these Raven defenders are going to find out what you and I did, Jim, when we watched Colin Kaepernick warm up and watched him in practice. Even when you're unblocked, that time Terrell Suggs, nobody blocks him, but he doesn't even get close to putting a hand on Colin Kaepernick. An accurate throw here would have been a touchdown. And then Moss, I thought, might have a play on the deflection, but it was wide of him. Kaepernick missed the open man for the touchdown that time. Third and goal. Pressure, and Kaepernick is decked. It's Paul Kruger, who has come on since midseason. Well, this is the Ravens defense in a... In a capsule right here. They are terrific in the red zone. Paul Kruger on the outside. What a jump on the snap count. And Anthony Davis has no chance to get back and get him. Boy, did he get there in a hurry. 
He's the one that they worry about, the 49ers. If you want to double team a pass rusher, you need to double team Paul Kruger. A lot of folks who are 49er fans worried about David Akers. This from 36. It's been a struggle. Akers kick, though, this time right down the middle. Akers from 36 out. Kruger with the 10 yard sack. Here's a look from our Bud Light cam. That Baltimore defense during the uh, AFC Championship game up at New England allowed only one touchdown by the Patriots in six trips they had inside the 25. And that's what you said all week. Bend, but don't break. Yeah, they bend, and that's right. Uh, you know, it's... Look at Ed Reed going to the locker room. Akers, five for five, down in Atlanta and producing touchbacks. And look who's running it out. Number one in the league, Jacoby Jones. And gets it out to the 22. Reed may have hurt his knee on this play right here, colliding with Vernon Davis. Both shaken up on the play. Reed's run into the locker room. Super Bowl 47 on CBS Sports is sponsored by Audi. Bravery, it's what defines us. Audi, truth in engineering. And by GoDaddy.com. Get your domain and website at GoDaddy.com. Stay tuned to see Beyonce and the Pepsi Super Bowl 47 halftime show. Kicked off by the first fan-made countdown. All right, second series coming up for the Ravens. Beginning at their 22. Playing out to fake. Flacco all the way back to the ace to throw it. And it's in the hands of Pitta. And a nine-yard gain. We got a report from Solomon Wilcott. Solomon. Yeah, guys, on the 24-yard catch by Vernon Davis, Ed Reed appeared to have hurt his left knee. Came off complaining. The team trainers took a look at it, and now they've taken him in for further evaluation. And it looked like Davis hurt his elbow. In fact, that's now the news we're getting. Probable will return for Davis. Second and one. And Rice is denied the first. John Harbaugh on that sidelines. Five seasons. Five playoffs, three times to the AFC Championship game, and now to the Super Bowl. The brothers, in fact, a perfect seven for seven as head coach has taken the teams to the postseason. Third and about a half a yard. They're going to run for it. And they get it. As Rice squirms his way for a couple. Well, talking about... John Harbaugh, you know, you dream of this game, you know, you grow up in a coach's home. There's no words to describe what it's like with your brother on the other sideline, but you have this whole life goal, but then you get there, and yes, it's Jim on the other sideline. Yeah, how about he says, you don't, don't even think for a minute that Jim has forgotten about last year's game <laughs> on Thanksgiving, where Baltimore beat the San Francisco 49 Beat them 16 to 6. You saw Ed Reed come back out on first down, and it's Rice. In fact, there was only one touchdown scored in that matchup last season. That was a touchdown catch by Dennis Pittup. Three-yard gain by Rice. Coming up, the Jeep Super Bowl today halftime report. JB, Dan, Shannon, Boomer, Coach Cower, their thoughts on the first half. Coming up on the Jeep Super Bowl today halftime report. 49ers now. defense is playing pass. They're daring the Ravens to run the football. Well, they've got a new back in here. He's dangerous, too. The rookie from Temple, Bernard Pierce. His first action. Pass incomplete. He was going to Bolden. Whitner was there with him. Well, this is their favorite pass play for the Baltimore Ravens. It's uh, either a running back or a wide receiver coming across. And Dante Whitner is ready for it. He reads it. Pass blocking so far for Joe Flacco has been outstanding. Since they shifted this offense line, uh, offensive line around at the start of the playoffs, 
They have been very, very good. That was the rookie, Osimile, who sealed off Justin Smith on that one, but an incompletion. Sets up third and seven. Blacko running away from Brooks. And then fires it down the field, and it's caught somehow by Bolden, who starts jawing with Culliver on the catch. Flacco escapes. Heaves it down the field and picks up 31. Well, Joe Flacco does move around better than people giving credit for it. That's for sure. It's a blitz. You can tell it's going to be a blitz because all the defenders are way off the wide receivers. And how about that? When it's Anquan Bolden, that is not a bad decision because he attacks the football and can make contested catches. You always say when he's covered, he's open. He's open. That's funny. First and ten. Flacco, again in trouble, dumps it off to Leach. Defenders are there, and he's dropped back for a loss by Bowman. A loss of three. Alden Smith was in on Flacco, and then it was Brooks. Well, he's a big man. Joe Flacco, Jim, you've talked about it, has never missed a start at any level, any time in his life, and he is moving now. That's about the third or fourth time his pocket movement has helped him. Coach Jim saying we had him. Final 30 seconds of the first quarter, and it's a second and 13. Pocket seal this time. Flacco works it down the field, and it's incomplete. Looking for Torrey Smith. Looked like a little double move that time by Torrey Smith. This is another thing you want to do against the 49ers, and... That is some illegal contact about 12 to 15 yards down the field by Culliver. Yeah, they, no flag. That contact is not there. He is going to run under that football and catch it. Ravens okay. have converted on all three of their past third down okay. conversions. Third and 13, and Flacco... They're going to get him this time. Ray McDonald and Alden Smith both in there. Well, they're pushing the pocket back, and that's what they do that time. They just keep hustling, and the Baltimore Ravens trying to pick up the first down, going down the field with the football. That's why the 49ers got the sack. That sack takes them out of field goal range, and that ends the first quarter. The quarter ends with Baltimore up 7-3. to three. We'll return to New Orleans after these messages. You're watching Super Bowl 47 on CBS. Jim and John, the reactions on that last play, a sack by the Niners. And they have just an incompletion. You're talking about a 55-yard field goal try. Tucker on the year was 4 out of 4 from beyond 50, so you think they likely would have gone for a field goal yeah I don't know I, my guess would have been no Jim just because the 49ers the way they moved the football last time I think they would have punted it away Cook in the punt it again is back deep Cook outstanding at pinning teams but this time he flies it into the end zone only a net of 22 it And there are the Harbaugh's who have had quite a busy week here. Jack and Jackie. Papa Jack. Reed is back in. And Grandma Yahi here with their two sons, their daughter, and ten grandchildren. Ed Reed is back in. Running away from Pollard. Did that pass have some zip on it or what? I'll tell you, we said he's faster than we thought when you watch him in person. 
And how about this throw? That's the one thing. If Colin Kaepernick could not run the football, he would still be a top flight NFL quarterback. But his, his throwing ability is, uh, I'll tell you, it's special. Good for 29. Second big catch by Davis. No, when you say he fires it on a play-by-play -play call, you mean it. Yeah, it's one time it's true. Here he is again, firing it back to Davis. Getting away from Ray Lewis and another first down. Gain of 11. I tell you, it's really chippy out here, too. After the play is over, we're seeing it now on a couple, three occasions. Well, let's don't forget who coaches these teams. Yes, right. So, it's, I think John and Jim Harbaugh, they both had a hard time even being cordial to each other this week because they teach their teams to be on edge. Last two plays have gone to Davis. Both plays he's recovered by Lewis. He's picked up 40 yards over those last two plays. Surrounding Kaepernick, who sticks it into the arms of LaMichael James. He's got another eight. Yeah, LaMichael James so fast, but when you play this read option, it's just like so many running teams we see. It's the backside people. That time, Haloti Nata goes up the field, and he opens up a hole for LaMichael James to run into. Niners with a second and one. Yeah. First down and Gore. Finally knocked down by Ellerby. Another seven yards. Well, you see, there's a good shot of the option. And you, you, even though they have people in position, you're catching the box that time. Watch Miller as he comes up in the line of scrimmage. He hits to Dale Ellerby while Ellerby makes the tackle, but it's way down the field by the time he can separate. And Kaepernick was hit by Suggs after he handed it off. Of course, that is not illegal. But you can assume that he has the ball after he hands it off. He takes a couple steps. You can still hit him. On first down, it's James trying to go wide. And he got away. Ball is out, and it's fallen on by Jones. Right over by that Baltimore bench, are they going to say they already had whistled him down? The ruling on the field is a fumble recovered by Baltimore for a first down Baltimore. Arthur Jones, who had a fumble recovery up at New England in the AFC Championship game, has one here. Was he down or did the ball come? Oh, the ball's clearly out. Rookie Courtney Upshaw. Watch him poke this ball out. Well, Jim, you and I talked about it coming into this game. After watching the Ravens for so many games, and then seeing them play the New England Patriots two weeks ago, what, when one guy is tackling, it's the second hitter. They are absolutely awesome at doing that. It's almost like the first tackler holds them up, and then who's going to be the first guy there to make that second hit? James' second fumble of the postseason. It's Pierce. Willis on him, but a gain of about five. With NFL Game Rewind, watch replays of every game from the 2012 season, including the playoffs and Super Bowl 47 on your laptop or tablet. For more information, text Rewind to 55171. Two tight ends, Bajama and Dixon and Pierce. Impressive looking running, rookie runner. And he's about a foot shy of a first. You know, you talk about Pierce, a running back, and Jim Caldwell, the offensive coordinator, said before they were playing the Washington Redskins, he almost feels the ground shake as somebody runs behind him. He turns and he sees his Bernard Pierce. So he, what he is saying, how hard he sticks his foot, his foot into the ground. That's why when people hit him, he's able to break those tackles. Third and a foot. 
44. He's lined up right behind 44. the fullback, Leach. Will they go to him for a third straight play? Yes, they do, and he has the first. You always tell me you follow Leach, you follow the football. Well, you got it. It's pretty simple. If you're a linebacker, just watch number 44. And that's what, that's what you do, too. Jim, linebackers, I don't care if they're all pros or what they play. That time it was Navarro Bowman, I think, that when you see Vontae Leach coming at you, you better find a way to get under him or get around him. Smith to the near side. Bolden in a slot. First and ten. Over to Pitta. Pitta has a nice gain of about eight. He's turning into quite a weapon, this Dennis Pitta. He's a very close pal of the quarterback. Yeah, I like to go out to dinner twice a week with Jill Flacco and I. And as you and I talk about the game, Torrey Smith has been so good on the outside, he draws attention from two defensive back, two, de two defensive backs, and that has opened up Dennis Pitta. Second and two. Pierce near the first. He was walloped by Willis. Well, I'd say that time Patrick Willis did his job and he said early when he started playing with the 49ers they weren't that good he took a lot of chances on the defensive side but they have so many good players over there now all he has to do is his assignment and that was a terrific tackle well they're moving the chains it's a first down you look at willis we met with him this week he gained weight for this game how about that that just shows you this i heard shannon sharp talk about the 49ers Rocker, they Rocker. are in unbelievable shape as a football hey, team and if the they're playing an offense that's going to run it. Patrick Willis picks up about three extra pounds to get himself and get ready for it. On first down, Flacco. Is a long ball coming? No. Mid-range, and it's caught. Dixon caught it on the rebound. Bobbled it for a moment and has 23. Joe Flacco saw Terrell Brown coming from the outside. So what does he do? He makes Dennis, or he makes Ed Dixon, turn and catch it off his back shoulder. What a catch by Dixon, but what a terrific throw by Joe Flacco. And the Ravens now inside the 30. As Rice returns to the backfield. They go Rice. Rice dribbling down to the 22. Now the 49ers, this team, this defense, they're always bigger and better than the teams they play a lot of times. I know they had some tough competition this year, but this offensive line of the Baltimore Ravens, Jim, we've already talked about it, how it just rounded into shape at the perfect time, and they are athletic and big. Game seven, he hurtled right over his left guard, Osimile, to pick up the yardage, and Flacco has Dixon for the second time on this drive, and a flag is out. Going to be flagged on Wittner. This tells you you never know who's going to catch the football or be. Personal foul. Tackling by the face mask. Defense number 31. Half the distance to the goal. Automatic. First down. We keep talking about Torrey Smith. Oh, you get a definite face mask as you see at that time. And Dennis Pitta, and there's Ed Dixon, a big part of the downfield throwing. Pitta comes into the huddle. And so hey, there's Mingo. Jacoby Jones at the last moment. First and hey, goal. Mingo. Rice, the Mingo, running Mingo. back. He has scored a touchdown in the last two games at Denver, at New England. Gets the handle here, and Rice gets about halfway home. Good job by Joe Flacco going on a quick count. Trying to get a quick hitter up the middle. That time the safety Goldson comes in and kind of stops it. But so far, Jim Caldwell kind of being a little offbeat, keeping the 49er defense off balance without question. Second and short, he's throwing it down the field. Mid second quarter. Baltimore trying to. Take it to the end zone for a second time. It's a play-action fake to Rice. Blacko has Pitta for the touchdown. Touchdown, Baltimore. Another good play call that time by Caldwell. 
Usually the tight end, number 88, they go to the outside. I think he just read it. Well, I don't think he read it. He wouldn't do that in this situation. They knew they'd be outside technique, so he hooks it up, and Joe Flacco just drives it in between defenders. Big series for the tight ends. Two catches by Dixon, both big gainers. Two catches by Pitta, the second one for the touchdown. And it's now 14 to three. And now Flacco has 10 touchdowns in the postseason and no picks. The fumble as San Francisco was inside the Ravens 25 and Baltimore takes it down for the touch. Fourteen to three, Flacco continues what has been almost a flawless postseason. Ten touchdowns, no picks. His coach, Coach John, telling us this week he's standing a little taller. How about his personalities coming out. Dude, he was cracking. He was making us laugh in our production meeting. So he, he definitely has changed with all this success. Tucker, in a good way, boots it to James. Coming off the fumble, and he slips a bit. And falls just across the 20. Pitt is becoming one of his favorite targets. Pitt had told us he thought there might be some openings in the middle of the field in this game. He was right. Super Bowl 47 on CBS Sports is sponsored by Bud Light, the official beer sponsor of Super Bowl 47. Here we go. The movie Star Trek Into Darkness in theaters May 17th. This film is not yet rated. And by Skechers Relax Fit Shoes, what Joe Montana wears for comfort. Back at the Mercedes-Benz Superdome, seventh time. The big game has been contested inside here. Tenth time overall in this great city. First three occasions out at the old two-lane stadium. On first down, Kaepernick going to drop back, going to throw it, middle of the field, and he's intercepted by Reed. Reed has just tied a postseason record for most interceptions as the New Orleans native has the pick and a flag is out. Well, I'll tell you, it's getting ugly out here. It's only the mid-second quarter, and we've seen this brewing. And now Jim runs out. This is going to be the first time a San Francisco quarterback's ever been intercepted in a Super Bowl. Well, that time, Jim, he was trying to hit Randy Moss. And Colin Kaepernick tried to throw it so hard, it got away from him just a little bit. And when you usually try to throw it hard and you miss it just a little, you're going to throw it high. That time it was high. Ed Reed, one of the greatest center fielders in the history of this league, can read the quarterback and react to the ball. And he was sitting there waiting for an easy interception. Reed's ninth career postseason interception ties the record. Well, he's really kind of played a different role here in the postseason, staying back much, much more. After the interception, there are fouls on both teams. Personal foul, unnecessary roughness. Offense, number 74. Personal foul, unnecessary roughness. Defense, number 24. Those fouls all set at the dead ball spot. First down, Baltimore. Before that last throw, between Montana and Young, San Francisco had thrown 17 touchdowns, the Niners in Super Bowl history, with no interceptions. Well, that ball should have been thrown soft and just in front of Randy Moss. Even then, it was going to be trouble. But this Ravens defense, they like to circle the wide receivers, watch the quarterback. That way they can react when it's in the air. That's why you saw so many guys around Randy Moss. Two takeaways in this quarter. And from the 38, Rice. Able to slip past a couple of tackles and pick up about five.
do you make of this? Well, you, the the game or the emotion. You got to get your emotions in check. Because you don't want a silly penalty. Second and four. And it's Leach. And Leach, if the ball squirts out, they're going to mark it for a first. The first down. Coming up on the Jeep Super Bowl today, halftime report. JB, Dan, Shannon, Boomer, and Coach Coward will have their analysis of the first half. Coming up on the Jeep Super Bowl today, halftime report. 49ers offense, they needed to settle the game down the last time they were out there. Instead, they just threw some gasoline on the fire. And this is some pressure for this 49er defense to stop them. On first down, back to the ground, and Rice able to get about a yard out of that. When you get situations like this, this is when you get a defense to start creeping up a little bit because the Ravens are running the football with a little success. Now, this 49er defense, they're used to being the big bully on the block. And today, they've been another big bully, there's no doubt. You worried about the long pass. Now you got to start worrying about the run. Second and nine, running again. And Rice has it to about the 22. Patrick Willis is there. The one thing Joe Flacco said about the offense, the coordinator change from Cam Cameron to Jim Caldwell. He goes, look, it's the same offense. It's the offense that Cam Cameron installed. So you got to give him a lot of credit. But he did say Jim Caldwell gets the plays in very quick, gives him time to look at defenses like this and get a little pre-snap read before the ball is snapped. Third and four with four and a half to go. and zags and has the first down. He is so shifty. Seen it a couple of times. Big play in the Indianapolis game on a short pass. Of course, the fourth and 29 signature play in the regular season. Well, that time, Navarro Bowman had him in man-to-man -man coverage, but he had to work his way around. Two defenders and two wide receivers, and Ray Rice felt the pressure on the outside, stops and breaks it back inside. He sits out of play as Pierce is back in. And will go with Pierce. He's able to spin off the hook. And maybe gain a yard. Back in the red zone again where the Ravens now. Their last 10 trips inside the red zone, 10 touchdowns. Well, they're big. We saw it in the first touchdown throw to Anquan Bolden. That's what you have to be alert for is inside receivers going straight up the field looking for the football and there doesn't have to be much of an opening for Joe Flacco to throw it in there. Bingo. All right, they spread it out. Flacco felt they could get some mismatches when they go spread. He's hit his last six passes. Second and nine. And it's through the hands of Bolden and could have been intercepted. Terrell Brown had a play on it for San Francisco. Yeah, if Joe Flacco just waits a little longer, this is where to go with the football. They're double teaming the inside or the slot receiver, the guy inside of Anquan Bolden. Well, you don't see Anquan Bolden drop it too often, but he's open. Not going to get big yards, but it would have made it third and short. Yeah, those hands usually so secure. Five out of six on third down. The Ravens face another one here. Need to get to the five for a first. Flacco going to the end zone. Looking for Smith, and it's over his head. Covered by Culliver. Yeah, good job by Chris Culliver. He's the extra defensive back. They love his cover skills. That time he was man-to-man, -man, but it was a blitz. You don't see this too often from the 49ers. They're coming free. Joe Flacco felt it and had to get rid of the football. And here's the first uh, rookie to kick in the Super Bowl since Ryan Longwell for Green Bay back in Super Bowl 32. And it's a 32-yard field goal attempt. Oh, it's a fake! And it's Tucker taking off! Tucker's running it! Short of the first! Stop the yard short! needed to get to the five and Darcel McBath was the man who prevented him from getting there and Patrick Willis as well
Boy, and Dixon was out in front. Had he been able to get that block, he might have been able to get it, but the Niners will take over at the six-yard line. And there she is, Sam Gordon. You just saw her, the nine-year-old football sensation from Salt Lake City with Commissioner Goodell watching the Super Bowl, playing with the boys, scoring 35 touchdowns this year, averaging eight yards a carry. How about that call? Yeah, it was a, listen, I'm not even going to second-guess the call. I understand why they did it. Everybody was up trying to block it, but Patrick Willis strung the play out, and it gave Darcel McBath just enough time to come over and stop the play short of a first down. A nine yards asking the kicker to get nine yards, that's a lot. And it came up a yard short. 3.05 to go, second quarter. Now they like to give Colin Kaepernick two plays. He checks into the one, but seeks the defense. It's gonna be Gore to the short side. Subs there and then up Shaw. And look at everybody, Jim, how they're up. Everybody at the line of scrimmage. Watch number 28, McBath. Good job by Willis. Just keeps the play alive. The little cutback. And McBath, good hustle. Stops the first down and maybe seven points. Second and ten. Both teams with all their timeouts. From the end zone, Kaepernick reloads. And he's almost intercepted. That was... Gary Williams stepping in front of Randy Moss. Well, Colin Kaepernick does not anticipate throws. He likes to see the person open, and then he fires the football. But he double clutches on this when he's open, and you saw the little extra clutch. And Kerry Williams, both of these corners, they are aggressive, and they're not afraid to go for those interceptions. Boy, he almost had that one. Did a great job recovering, too, after slipping and then getting back in position. You throw an interception, sometimes you start second-guessing your decision-making. Third and ten. And they go draw. And the Ravens allow them to get about six, but they'll force the punt. Good stand by the defense. And again, that is Jim Harbaugh and Greg Roman seeing that their quarterback is a little shaky. And they're worried. That last decision in double clutching, that'll make you run a draw on third and long. Timeout called by the Ravens, who have forced a three and out. It'll be getting the football back in a moment. Super Bowl 47 on CBS Sports is sponsored by Volkswagen. Get in, get happy. And by Coca-Cola. Who will win the Coke? Vote and decide. And that's a look from our Bud Light cam. And after the Ravens' defense, has the stand there you say that makes that decision look well, even a little bit better now well it's one of the reasons why you do it your defense has got to beat on the offense you hope they can hold them back in there you take that chance look you can't be afraid if you're going to take a chance a good time to do it is in the first half where you have a time you have time to recover in case it hurts you Andy Lee they don't get much better than this set all kinds of records last year pro bowler all pro this year, and he hits it down to the 33. Jacoby Jones pops it, picks it up, and is able to get ahead to about the 45 with 2:07 to go and two timeouts. A 55-yard boot. Tavares Gooden, former Raven, makes the tackle for the 49ers. How would you rate Flacco's performance so far, Phil? Oh, I, what's the word for it? It's outstanding. Uh, it's not good enough. I mean, Joe Flacco has made some terrific throws in this game. He is doing the old phrase we always hear. He's throwing receivers open. Probably, besides the scramble to throw down the sideline, the back shoulder throw to Dixon was probably the best throw of the game by him. For something to remember here. They have a chance to do something right before the half. And then they'll be receiving the second half kickoff. Because they deferred after winning the toss. It's Flacco to Jones and the ball's out of his hands. And 2.04 to go. I know how you love to manage a clock and you probably would have loved to have seen a running play there if you were calling plays. No, no, this doesn't bother me at all. You know, you, you, they're going to run their offense. They spread it out. They got the exact defense they wanted, Jim. You just got to throw and catch it. It was there to be made. 
Flacco a little high on the throw. It's another play on the north side of the two-minute warning as Flacco is going for that long ball. They've been anticipating, and it's incomplete. No flag intended for Torrey Smith. Culliver breaks it up. See anything here? Offensive pass interference, if anything, another good job by Culliver. Two-minute warning. Stay tuned to see Beyonce and the Pepsi Super Bowl 47 halftime show kicked off by the first fan-made countdown. As I watched his first half, the 49er defense, when they have played, just got up and played man-to-man -man coverage on these Raven receivers, they've won the battle. Joe Flacco's getting most of his completions against zone coverage when they're just watching him. Third and ten. And Flacco heaves it down the field. Open as Jones catches his own his back. He can get up. Jones makes the shift. Jones to the end zone and he's in for the score. What a play by Jacoby Jones. What a call from the sideline. It's a little double move to Jacoby Jones going across the field. There's an inside safety going to double team him, but that move opens him up. And what an alert play, Jim, getting off the ground and going to the end zone. I thought he might have been touched. Oh, he no, was close, but he wasn't. Him. Yes. How about these playoffs for Jacoby Jones? The 70 yarder at Denver. The end of regulation. And then coming home to New Orleans. Catching one here on third down, like it was out in Denver. And it's 21 to 3. Joe Flacco has just thrown his third touchdown of this game. And he's got 11 in the postseason, which ties an NFL single year postseason record. Well, that is a call from up top by Jim Caldwell. Chris Culliver has been so aggressive and has really been terrific here in the first half. They took advantage of the fact that he is playing so hard on the receiver. And that little wiggle, the double move by Jacoby Jones got him wide open down the field. Jones had one touchdown catch in the regular season. Now in the postseason, a 70-yarder and a 56-yard touchdown catch. James takes a knee. 145 to go. Niners have all their timeouts. Couple things to watch. Here's Jaco Jacoby Jones. Anquan Bolden occupies the deep safety. So that is enough, Jim, to get one-on-one -on, -one on the outside. Now look at this little move here. And he goes right by him because Chris Culliver thinks he's going across the field. And that was a move at full speed. And Culliver not able to react to it. And a good job, of course, we already said, to jo Jacoby Jones getting off the ground. San Francisco allowed one touchdown pass of 50 yards or longer all year. And he, right here, if you're Colin Kaepernick, you'd be super conservative with the football. <laughs> That's Crabtree and Reed, along with Lewis and later Suggs, collide for a six-yard game. Well, this 49er team used to be in down. We saw it down in Atlanta, and Atlanta's a terrific football team, but they don't have this rate. This is not the same defense they're facing. Second and four. And Kaepernick has the first down to Walker. Got a flag. Unbelievable throw. Two. Personal foul. Roughing the passer. Defense. Defense. Number 92. 15-yard penalty added to the end of the play. Automatic. First down. The call on Nada now gives the 49ers a great spot to do some business here before the half. Yeah, definitely a late hit. Two steps for Holy Nata. But how about that throw down the field, too? Now, 
He threw an interception, almost threw another one into tight coverage against maybe the best defensive back against the Ravens. Colin Kaepernick just stepped forward and just absolutely nailed Davis with the football. That is the first penalty on Baltimore. And now the Niners have it on the Ravens side of the field with 1.15 to go in the half. Kaepernick incomplete going back to Moss who does not have a catch. It was Jimmy Smith. Jimmy Smith, first round draft pick, Jim. We've talked about him. He is getting healthy again, and they decided he's slowly getting back in the rotation. He comes in as the third defensive back or the third corner. And last week against New England, he played well, or two weeks ago. And they said they're going to get more opportunities, and you can see why. No, no, no. Oh, On second and ten, they pick up the blitz, and Kaepernick down the field, caught by Walker. And they ruled he was down. I didn't see him touched. Not sure he was touched, but a nice catch by Delaney Walker. I think we said it right. Everybody talks about all the zone read and all that. How about this throw? Well, they're sliding by him. Ed Reed got a hand on him to down him, but the Niners are in the red zone. Coming out of a 49er timeout. Still have two with 57 seconds to go. Oh, he's definitely touched. I think it goes back, though, to just not to keep harping on it, but if Colin Kaepernick cannot run, you see why he could still be a big-time quarterback in, this, in the NFL. He just makes special throws. That was a special throw, that last one. One of the strongest arms I've ever seen. It is, and he does it with ease. That's what, that's when you know you can throw it. Make it look easy. First and ten, and Kaepernick. Back to Davis, Howard and Lewis. Double them up, gain of eight. I always say, you know, you judge throwers when they need to really rear back and let it go. Can they still control it? Both of these quarterbacks can. And you see the clock running down. It's no hurry by the 49ers offense. They still have two timeouts, no rush. Make sure this is the last possession of the first half. Second and two, and Gore is stopped for no gain. And this will generate a timeout. Arthur Jones makes the play. Well, Jim, let's go back and look at that seam throw by Colin Kaepernick. Here's the tight end, going to go up the field, make a little move, but watch Ed Reed. Colin Kaepernick sees him. I'm telling you, I, I saw this ball thrown. I go, this is going to be trouble, but he sees Ed Reed, drives it in there low where the receiver can catch it and protect himself. Coach Jim <laughs> reacting to that pass oh. play. Wow. Well, Jim Harbaugh was on the field before the game. You and I were laughing about it. He warms all the quarterbacks up. He runs around, he catches it, throws it back to him. That's just how he was in practice the other day. Involved in every aspect, mentally and physically. They got a big play here, third and two, with 21 seconds to go, second quarter. Kaepernick rolling out, looking, looking, and decides to just drop down at the nine. For no gain. Yeah, he, I don't know why he hesitated. Should have thrown the football right away unless it was a double move. But it looked like the receiver was going to catch it, get the first down, and go out of bounds. Now they take the timeout with three seconds left to bring out Akers. Let's watch him come to the right. Crab tree out in the flat. Uh, a little, be little before that. There's nothing there. Nothing there. Here it is from the right now it's there he had him and crabtree makes the second move because he saw the quarterback to keep it was keeping was going to continue to run that goes in the books actually as a sack for ray lewis now i'm going to go into the memory banks you remember a game we did a big game 21 to 3 right before the half a field goal to make it 21 6 at the intermission patriots and colts and the colts were down the short end of that score 21 6 in the afc championship game back in 06 and came back to win it. 
Well, they're making some big plays, no doubt about this 49er offense, so they they got to have some faith going into the locker room. Jennings to snap, lead a hold from 27. David Akers, two for two. And that closes out the half. Coming up during halftime, the Pepsi Super Bowl 47 halftime show. And that's the end of the first half with the score. Baltimore 21 and San Francisco 6. We'll be back with the Jeep Super Bowl Today halftime report after this message and a word from your local station. You're watching Super Bowl 47 on CBS. This is what I play for, so I gotta make it count. Flacco, end zone bound, and he's got a touchdown! And it's Tucker taking off, short of the first. Heaves it down the field, open as Jones sees in for the score. What a play by Jones! Three touchdown passes in all. Kaepernick, meanwhile, has thrown a pick. It's 21 to 6. The Flacco touchdown passes to Bolden, to Pitta to Jones your take on the first half and what we can look for in the second half well I thought it was exciting and I, and I, saw, I heard Boomer Esiason and say at halftime if you're Baltimore stay aggressive because we saw Colin Kaepernick this offense getting down the field they can do it so they're explosive they can definitely come back what a performance though by the Baltimore quarterback and you said they've really said you know what we're giving it to Joe to win this game big guy it's up to you and, mm -hmm. and I think they did that against the New England Patriots we saw it at times even against the Denver Broncos but they've kept Joe Flacco in rhythm in this game Jim Caldwell's done an excellent job every time you think they're going to run it he's giving him some easy passes and they're letting him throw it down the field which is his, his which is his greatest strength let's go down to Solomon Wilcox Hey guys, at halftime I talked to John Harbaugh and I asked him about the thought process behind attempting the fake field goal and he said it really was a case of low risk, high reward. Either we score a touchdown or we back the 49ers up against their own end zone. We've seen this before with coaches being very aggressive with their play calling in Super Bowls. Jim? Thank you, Solomon. Of course, uh, John Harbaugh came into the league as a special teams coach for years with the Philadelphia Eagles. He, along with uh, his brother, both coming into the league, hired by Mike Lombardi, who's the new general manager of the Cleveland Browns. It was Joe Banner and Lombardi, actually, who brought John Harbaugh out of Indiana University to the Eagles. And later on, it was Lombardi bringing him out to the Raiders. Jim Harbaugh, that is. And this could be a run back from nine deep for Jacoby Jones. And look at him go. Jones is past the 50, and he is flying inside the 20 and a kickoff return 109 yards and a touchdown an all-time record there have been 108 yard returns in league history never 109 and what a way to bolt right out of the locker room to start the second half. I, you know, Jim, both you and I could not believe he was bringing it out of the end zone that deep. It was a line drive kick. I think that's what he did. He gazed it that it was that way that gave him a chance to bring it out. Extra point. Good. It took him 11 seconds to go 109 yards. And you How about wonder, that? Well, you wonder if you're the kickoff team of the San Francisco 49ers, you see the return man go nine yards deep in the end zone, you just figure, well, he's going to take a knee. But he got himself in good position going forward as the football was caught. And you could the open lane up inside. Couldn't tell who got out of the lane going down there, but we've heard many times John Harbaugh told us in a meeting the return man's job is to read the kick. If you can catch it deep in the end zone coming forward like that, it wasn't a high kick, 
That's why you bring it out. Jones earlier this year had a 108-yard return against Dallas to tie the all-time league record as Jim Harbaugh cannot believe it. His team gives up the longest kick return in postseason or any other time for that matter. Regular season, postseason, never been a 109-yard kick return in the history of the league until now. What an acquisition by the Baltimore Ravens. He's rounded out their receiving core this year. And, of course, you've said it many times, always a dangerous return guy. That changes everything for the 49ers. And Tucker's kick. James from seven deep. And he is smashed at the 13. By Hedebo. Well, there's a kick return by Desmond Howard. 99 yards for a touchdown right here in New Orleans. He was the MVP of Super Bowl 31. It's gone from bad to worse. As Kaepernick flushed out and fires. Beautiful pass. Crabtree. With Pollard riding him down out of bounds across the 40. And a gain of 29. Jim Harbaugh had to tell his quarterback, Colin Kaepernick, still be smart. Don't take chances. A long way to go. But how about this throw on the move over the top of Pollard right in stride to Crabtree. When you talk about Colin Kaepernick, yes, he threw an interception. But how many good throws has he made in this game so far? Kaepernick with 168 yards passing. Wait, wait, wait. 14. Go to the ground with Gore. And Suggs. Drops him after a gain of about three. Ray Lewis told us, John Harbaugh told us, the number one key in this game, make sure when they give that football off on that zone read, just like that time, they stop the runner coming up the middle. And so far today, they've had guys in position almost every time to make the tackle. Every once in a while, the running back has made a miss. Drops back into the shotgun on second and seven. Wide to the left as Kaepernick thought about it. Look out, and he's tipped up by Arthur Jones. A fumble recovery and now a sack for Jones and a loss of six. Good no throw, though, by Colin Kaepernick. He is going to throw this down the middle to Vernon Davis. Watch, but look at the safety is anticipating. Welcome back to New Orleans. This is Steve Tasker, sideline reporter for the uh, Super Bowl 47. If you're expecting to hear our friend Jim Nance, it may be a moment before he gets on. Half the power in 
New Orleans Stadium, the Superdome here, is out in almost a perfect semicircle of the lights. Half the stadium stayed light, half of it went out. The scoreboard is also not working as well. And here's what happened. Moments ago, as we watched the game start to proceed pretty much as normal, one big click of the light switch, and we lost power in the half of the stadium. Now it's well lit, there's no danger, no one's in, injured or of any kind, but obviously the players are milling around, and we've got a lot of officials running around wanting to get this game back on. We will step away for a moment, and we will continue our coverage of Super Bowl 47 right after this. We're hearing that play is going to resume here in the next minute. So it's going to be a delay and a little excess of 33, well, there it is, 34 minutes now. And when we receive a statement from the NFL, we'll pass that along. Resume, resume action. Third down and 13. Let's go. Officially, it's third and 13 for Kaepernick and the 49ers. Wow. Running away from Nata. And McPhee and takes the throw underneath. Helmets fly off for Walker, but it's only a gain of seven. It'll force the Niners to punt. What a good job by the defense. Colin Kaepernick, nice job getting away from the pass rush. But this Ravens team, they understand a team concept. Everybody stayed in position. Nobody got open down the field on the second move. So Andy Lee's back. And so too, though, is Jacoby Jones. Kobe Jones again going up here in New Orleans where he attended Abramson High School. He's not going to have any reason to go after this one as it goes into the end zone. Just a net of 34. Watch online streaming of the Super Bowl with exclusive camera angles and immediate access to the commercials. It's live now at cbssports.com slash Super Bowl. Now let's take into effect here how long it's been since the Baltimore offense and the San Francisco defense have been on the field. 84 minutes real time. Well, again, you know, Jim, I, players are so used to practicing, going in, taking breaks. Training camp coming back out, they're in great shape. I really don't see it being a problem for either side. Blacko comes out throwing. He's got Smith. And he darts up to the 35. Bowman was hoping to cut in front of that and make the pick, but snatched out of the air there by Torrey Smith for 15. Well, this, this is where you say arm strength is important in the NFL. Bowman thinks he's going underneath. I think he's got a chance, but Joe Flacco rips it. He throws it at the right spot. Torrey Smith reaches up and makes the catch. Flacco over 200. Second catch of the game for Smith as Rice scoots ahead for another four. You ever had anything like that happen? Well, one time, I forgot the year exactly, I'm going to say 1982, the lights went out in Giant Stadium on a Monday night game against the Green Bay Packers, but I was not playing. I was upstairs watching it, but it really didn't disrupt play that time either, Jim. Like I said, the players, they can handle situations like this. Second and seven, and Flacco lofts it in the area of Bolden, who had tight coverage over there. Terrell Brown defending. Well, this kind of answers your question. You, know, you say... All right, it's, the score is 28 to 6. 
the Ravens to try to milk the clock, whatever. No, they're coming out and playing and being aggressive and not worried about the clock yet. They're playing the game. They send Pitta out wide left. Corey Smith wide right. Again. Spread it out with five receivers in all, including Rice in the slot to the left. Stopped about a yard short by Goldson. Good job that time. When you're down 28 to 6, you got to force the issue a little bit. And that time they came with the blitz from the outside. Joe Flacco, uh, all game long. The one thing I've noticed, even when the pressure's around him, Jim, he just doesn't flinch. He stands there. He has a great presence. Knows when he's in trouble. That time, just calmly threw it to the open Ray Rice. Sam Cook will send it down to Ted Ginn, Jr. This one, too, is too strong. And a touchback, net of 36. 28 to 6 after a 35-minute delay at the Super Bowl. Ravens in front. Super Bowl 47 on CBS Sports is sponsored by Iron Man 3. Go online now for an extended look at Iron Man 3. Coca-Cola. There's still time to vote and decide for who will win the Coke. And by Ram Trucks, built with honor, forged with pride, guts, glory, Ram. That last Ravens possession, a minute and 44 seconds. So now back to the 49ers at their own 20. I think it's still important for the 49ers, stay patient, make sure you give your offensive line a chance by running the football stop. Well, they fake the run, and Kaepernick. Nata over there helps push him out, but a gain of about five. Uh, you know, the one thing I want to say, Jim, we talked to the Ravens, we talked to John Harbaugh. Remember, they played the Washington Redskins during the year, and they had a little trouble with the zone read concept. Really, the give to the running back, Morris, is, was, was really hurting them. But they said that experience of having that week to get ready, two weeks here in the Super Bowl, I think we have seen they know how to stop the option attack of the 49ers. And defensive coordinator Dean Pease promoted to that position when Chuck Pagano left to take the Colts job. Second and five. And Kaepernick has an open field, a first down and more. Out of bounds at the 40. That's a scramble for 15. Yeah, really an excellent job that time by Colin Kaepernick. Nobody really looks like they're going to be open down the field. He's reading the coverage, but that's, you need discipline on the Baltimore side, the defense. You know, even though you got a big lead, it doesn't take long. One score, and you look up and go, well, here we go again. Defensive players over pursuit. Kaepernick's now rushed for 36 yards. That's the most on the 49ers side. What number? 32. First and ten, inside give to Gore for a couple. You know, Gore did not have any big numbers when they played a year ago in Baltimore. 14 carries, 39 yards, and they've contained him again here tonight. There you go, Kiyomatu, that time on the inside, number 96. You look at him, you got Haloti Nata, you got Terrence Coney, Arthur, Terrence Cody, Arthur Jones. That is a lot of big men in there. So they can't push him around, and that's one of the big keys so far for this Ravens defense. Their defensive line has stopped the give inside. Okay, Moyatu's brother Chris won a Super Bowl with Pittsburgh a few years back. Here's the second down play, and it's Kaepernick down the field. And in and out of the hands of Crabtree. Corey Graham will break it up. Well, that's what they need. Is they need the big class play down the field. Michael Crabtree in the slot. It's a little, that was the route called. How about that? A fake sideline route, turn it up the field, and what a throw by Colin Kaepernick. That is perfect. Good coverage, too. But when you're down, you got to make great catches. Niners only one out of six on third down. Third and eight. 
Kaepernick fires that one in there for the first down, and Moss has his first grab. Uh, you know, the one thing I'm taking out of this game, Jim, and really all through the playoffs is as you watch it, the number of big plays in the games, and they're because the quarterbacks are just throwing that football. Arm strength. You know, I don't want to hear anymore that it's not that important. Well, I think we've seen in the league in these playoffs and in this game, it's pretty important. From the Baltimore side at the 49. And a timeout called by San Francisco. One they may wish they had later in the game. And here's a look from our Bud Light cam. 49ers having to use a timeout right there. Yeah, it, listen, you know, Coach Cowher talked about an inexperienced quarterback. And I'll tell you, that's a big timeout. When you're down, second half, you've got to treat those timeouts like gold. And you saw the frustration on Jim Harbaugh as Kaepernick came to the sideline. You've got to, you've got to know as a quarterback right here, you're in a little trouble, you don't understand the play, then just call one and go up there and run it. They have tons of running plays. I, I know he could do that, so... Maybe they haven't practiced enough, they weren't ready for it, and it was a big mistake. Again, only the 10th career start for Kaepernick. His first ever road start was here in New Orleans this season. The game the 49ers won. Kaepernick, looking long then, finds it up the man on the sideline. It's Davis for 18. Well, you got to be careful when you take away the short passes with Colin Kaepernick. That time, he kind of fakes outside. Let's just watch his motion. He's going to throw it in the flat to the running back. Nope. Then the last second, looks like a dangerous throw. But I'm just telling you, to him, it's not. Small windows, he can throw it in there. Davis with 90 yards receiving now on five catches. Well, you take away the interception, Jim. He has thrown the football. Awesome. From the 31. And Kaepernick again. Zips it in there. Crabtree still on his feet and in for the touchdown. Bounced off of two hits. And the Niners find the end zone for the first time tonight. Another good throw. Just powers the football in between defenders where it gave Crabtree time to catch the football and then protect himself. Nice move out. Pollard can't get back inside. And the tackle is missed. And Crabtree goes in. 31 yards. Williams and Pollard both had plays on him. And it was Pollard who got knocked down this time. He's usually the enforcer. Still yeah. fearless with the football, isn't he? He will throw it. And now going for the point after. Akers. 28 to 13. 80-yard drive engineered by Kaepernick. The brothers' reaction. Seven plays to cover the 80 yards. Crabtree, who's really been able to break out as a player this year once uh, Kaepernick took over at quarterback. That's it. He, he, he admits Kaepernick comes in. It's changing his game. He says, now you can see my talent. It's all on that catch, that's for sure. All right, Jacoby Jones back to receive this. And the NFL has just changed his return to 108 yards. Now this time failing to get anywhere near the 20. Anthony Dixon tackles him. It was passed along to us originally 109. And now it's at 108. They say the ball was two yards from the end line. So it ties the all-time record instead of setting it alone. Play action, and Flacco, incomplete, going in the direction of Bolden. 
Tim, let's go back real quick and watch the touchdown by Michael Crabtree. Here's why it works. You're going to see the tight end, Davis, go down here. And then Crabtree's going to cross. But watch how Joe, I mean, uh, Colin Kaepernick throws the football in between the defenders. He just drives it in there because he threw it so hard, it made Pollard and Williams miss the tackle. Second and ten, and Pierce... Pierce is stopped by Brooks for no gain. Yeah, that touchdown throw by Colin Kaepernick has given energy to this defense. You saw the coverage on the first play, and now that front, the emotion, the crowd, is behind this 49ers defense. Third and ten. And shotgun time for Flacco. Oh, and they sack him at the seven. Brooks. Terrible mistake by the offensive line that time. No reason. It's a four-man rush. And it looks like Bryant McKinney just gets confused. Who's going to block the outside guy? I don't know why. But Joe Flacco, very fortunate he doesn't fumble the football. Do you think the momentum's changed since the delay? Big time. Here's Cook. Oh, and this one. Bounces at the 45, picked up by Ginn. Trying to get outside. He wants that edge. And he's inside the 40. Cook is there, the punter, and he smacks him at the 20. Again with the return, the punter was a linebacker in high school, so he's never been afraid to get in and make a little contact, and he may have saved the touchdown. The punt is so bad, they get it where they want it, down the right sideline, but look at the blocks. The 49ers stay with it, they keep hustling, and Ted again now... Drafted in the first round by the Miami Dolphins, he still has great speed and takes it across the field. From the 20. Kaepernick. Got his man. It's Smith. Refusing to go down until three Ravens were around them. It's Davis. Davis with the catch. Vernon Davis now over a hundred on the game. Yeah, Vernon Davis. They clear out one side, the left side. Vernon Davis on the end of the line of scrimmage just comes across. You see the receivers down the field. Delaney Walker takes two defenders and Vernon Davis catches it. And even in a short burst, you can see that speed. Got a first and goal to go. Davis with a second straight big game for the 49ers. Huge in the NFC title game. Now you look for the quarterback run. It's Gore running right side, and Gore has the edge and the touchdown, San Francisco. What a block by Delaney Walker. Yeah, Mike Yupati also. Dupati, number 77, seals the side, and Delaney Walker comes around and gets Ed Reed and just gives Frank Gore untouched into the end zone. What a running lane, and Delaney Walker, just an unsung hero on this 49er offense, can do everything, catch it, block, play fullback, and help the running back score touchdowns. Got a player down. We'll be right back. Super Bowl 47 on CBS Sports is sponsored by the Lincoln Motor Company and the new 2013 MKZ. And by Bud Light. Make a safe ride home part of your game plan. The 49ers have just scored a second touchdown in 2 minutes and 21 seconds. Nata was the injured player. He got rolled up on that play, the Gore touchdown run. And now the PAT to make it a one-score game.
28-20. Now the San Francisco defense. They got to Flacco. The return by Ginn. The touchdown by Gore. Ted Ginn Jr. That punt return made it just a 20-yard drive for the 49ers. And since the power outage, things have completely changed here. You know it has, but you know, I'm going to say this. I don't think it affected Baltimore. I think it's the 49ers. I think it's Colin Kaepernick with these throws. We saw the return. I mean, just think back. The score is 28 to 6, Jim, and he makes that third and what was it, nine? That that hard throw to the outside to Randy Moss to keep a drive going. And since then, he's made three or four throws that have been, I'm not going to say they're special, but they're pretty dang good. As he talks to Alex Smith, who we took over the jump from after Smith suffered a concussion against the Rams. Baltimore though since the outage on offense. Two drives, two punts. And Jones unable to get a clean handle on it. Well Jim, let's look at this touchdown. Let's watch Mike Upati, the left guard, pull around and make a block. But watch Delaney Walker come around and get Ed Reed. You talking about just sealing it by Upati? And how about that block on Ed Reed, who's going to make the tackle probably on the four or five yard line? Yeah, Walker lost his helmet, leading the way with that brilliant block. And there's not a. That's a big, if he's out, that's big because he has been clogging up the middle in the run game. Just three. Two statements have been released. First, the Superdome spokesman, Eric Egan. Quote, power has been restored. We sincerely apologize for the incident. End quote. Statement from an NFL spokesman. Quote, stadium authorities are investigating the cause of the power outage. We will have more information as it becomes available. When you look at a situation like this, the crowd, the momentum is on the 49ers defensive on their side. This is where you need a play from the coach that's easy to execute and kind of tricks the defense. Second and seven. There's a throw to the Rice. Ball's out. Ball is out and falling on him by Brown. Rice, who had one fumble all regular season, now has his third in the postseason. Fumbling twice against the Colts. And now here. It was a blitz. Ray Rice catches it. What a job by Terrell Brown staying in front and then knocking the football out. Ray Rice sees him, tries to spin, and the stiff arm, but that right arm of Brown goes in and knocks it out. I know the 49ers have a lot to do with this, but since the power outage, there's no energy coming from the Ravens. They are flat and not focused and the 49ers are taking advantage ready to strike again from the 24. <laughs> Wasting no time and the pass over the head of Vernon Davis. Well we talk so much about the Ravens putting the football in the hands of their quarterback Joe Flacco hot the whole uh, postseason. How about the 49ers, Jim? I mean, they just continue to let Colin Kaepernick get the football and fire it down the field. And they were looking to score on the first play with that last play call. It's D'Angelo Tyson on that defensive front for the Ravens in place of Nata. Second and ten. Take the pass. Go up the middle of the floor. And Ray Lewis is there to block it. Block the path, gain of three. Coach Jim sends in again as an extra receiver. Double tight ends, Davis and Walker. Third and seven. 
Kaepernick to the end zone and tipped away at the last moment by Williams. Trying to find Ted Ginn. Nobody opened that time on this pass down the field. They're trying to do a little out and up again, but nice job by Kerry Williams. He doesn't follow the wide receiver inside. He's supposed to push him off to the safety. He does, and then he comes back and knocks it away from Ted Ginn. Excellent job. This will be a 39-yard field goal attempt from Akers, who's two for two on the night. And he keep the momentum going with this field goal. Akers' kick is no good. But there is a flag. There's a flag on the field. They may have run into him. It was fourth and seven. Running into the kicker. Defense, number 23. Five-yard penalty. Replay. It'll be fourth and two. Shockey Brown running in to Akers. Oh. That's, that's, uh, to me, that's uh, I, it, that was tough. Right? That could have been a personal foul. Very easy, Jim. His leg was still up in the air, and he got rolled under. With just a five-yard penalty instead, so... It'll give Akers another shot, this time from 34. Tell you what, Till, that's going to put some thoughts into Jim Harbaugh's head later in the game if it comes down to a field goal to win this game, or two. If he gets caught in a situation whether to go for it or kick it. Akers this time drills it. 17 points in a 4-minute, 10-second stretch. All coming since the lights went out at the Superdome. It was 28 to 6. And coming out of the break. Crabtree bouncing around, going in for the touchdown. Then Gore. Rice with the fumble that would lead to three more. Here's the Akers kick, and Akers right now is meeting with one of the trainers. And now he's up walking around. You know, we, before the game, hit. you remember before the game, before any players were on the team, before you even announced either team was coming out, David Akers was already standing on the bench alone. Yeah, why, I, why I don't know. I just wondered why he was out there. Maybe to try to get some, a few extra warm-up kicks. But he did not come out for the team. He came out way before they did. Probably more mental than anything yeah, for no Akers, question. who's struggled mightily here. And they've even, of course, had a couple of kickers they brought in. Nate Kading, Billy Cundiff. But Jim Harbaugh deciding to go with Akers. Stick with the man who, just a year ago, set NFL records for field goals made, 44 in a season and points scored. Yeah, he was grimacing. He doesn't really catch this anywhere close to what he had been earlier. From the two, what a hit. Walker, he's everywhere. Throwing blocks, bone-crushing tackles. Well, his title on the team is the Swiss Army Knife because he can do a little bit of everything. And it is so true. On the offense, and a terrific special teams player. Wow, Jones doing a great job of holding on to that one because that helmet speared the pigskin. But he held on to it. Rice is out. They brought in Pierce. They go with Pierce. Tripped up by the ankles by Patrick Willis. Well, here are the, the numbers. Since the 35-minute delay, one first down for the Ravens. 109 yards of offense for the 49ers. Second and seven. And it's Pierce. What a run. Yeah, it looked like he could have lost some yardage. 
he was able to make something out of it and pick up four. We, you know, we've seen it, Jim. We've talked about him many times so far in this postseason, but they picked up a, a prize in the third round, the Baltimore Ravens getting Pierce. Able to make cuts. The big thing I notice about him, he just reads the right place to go with the football and has the speed to just bounce it outside nonchalantly. Coach John calls it deceptive speed. He says he'll be a future star. Third and three. Flacco open. Bolden first down. And Bolden stiff arm on Culliver before they sling him down on the San Francisco side of the field. Near the 35. That's what they needed. They went out here and gave a formation. They stacked the receivers and it caused confusion. That's what the Atlanta Falcons did last week against this 49er pass defense. And that's why I say you got sometimes you got to get a drive starter or keep the drive going play call and Jim Caldwell came up with the right play that time stack the receivers Jim when they're trying to play aggressive man-to-man -man defense hard for them to figure out who's going to take which one Bolden with a lot of yards after the catch that's 30 and all on that play over to pit up side steps a hit and then Willis brings him down game of eight well, what a drive by this Ravens offense. How about that, Jim? It's just, they've been stuck in neutral, no doubt. They're sitting there 28 to 6, and I'm sure some thoughts crept into their mind, like, wow, oh, we're pretty close to winning this No thing. question. Yeah, I mean, it's just human nature. But Joe Flacco, a couple good throws, a couple good calls. Now they're down there in scoring territory. Of worse, a field goal try. Second and three, and Rice back in the backfield and spins near the first. Uh, number 77, Jim, Matt Burke. All these years, beat up the last couple years. What an outstanding year he has had. The leader of the offensive line. We talked about it, how they just, it's fell into place for him here in the playoffs. Fourth straight solid game by the Ravens offensive line. Yeah, that man 15 years out of Harvard. It's going to be third and less than a yard. Final half minute, quarter number three. And the running backs are Leach and Pierce. They'll ask the rookie to pick it up. And Pierce that could have gotten him. But he's able to slip away and pick up the first down. He escaped Alden Smith and gains eight. You said it to set the speed. How about that read once again? They were attacking, attacking inside. Pierce saw it and just... Breaks it to the outside. Alden Smith breaks the tackle. Dale Whitner had a play on him first. Then it was Smith. Mm. And, you know, Pierce is still down just off the field on the sideline. With 10 seconds to go in the third quarter. The Ravens have a new set of downs at the 18. And I don't believe they're going to try to run a play here before the end of the quarter. We're through three. 28-23, Baltimore will return to New Orleans after this message and a word from your local station. In the third quarter that began with Jones returning the kick 108 yards for a touchdown and then that outage followed by the 49ers coming to life after the delay 17 nothing stretch Pierce is being taken in for evaluation nada the word up is sprained knee not expected to return hot running back you lose him that's that's a big deal of course not a two first down from the 18 and Rice He's able to wiggle in traffic for a gain of about four. That offensive line, it was completely different during the regular season. Then before the wild card game, they shifted Orr from the left side over to the right side, and McKinney stepped up, and Osimile moved from tackle to left guard. I mean, it's all reworked, and it has it ever worked. It's, it's changed their football team. All of a sudden, Joe Flacco is the dynamic because he gets more time to throw it. They run the ball when they need to. They protect the quarterback. They're awesome at it. Well, that's the big reason why they're in the Super Bowl. 
Second and six. And Flacco has Bolden again. And Bolden sets him up for a first and goal to go from the five. Just another beautiful throw right in stride by Joe Flacco and Anquan Bolden in the slot. Oh, nice little game of possum. How about that? Just stay there, loaf, and then make the quick break. And Joe Flacco knew he was the second read for him, and he puts it, puts it right on him. Every time it seems the Ravens have gotten into a pinch in the playoffs, they start going to Bolden on a regular basis. He gave him a big start to this drive. First and goal, and up the middle, Rice. About a yard shy. Deshaun Goldson, he can, um, as you heard, he can hit like a linebacker. Safety play on both sides. Offensive line, safety play. Second and goal. Yes. Twice again. Completely clogged up for no gain. Now it's going to get interesting here on third and goal. Especially if they fail to get in. Well. Of course, it's a five-point margin. Well, they're just inside the two-yard line. Blacko, play action, backpedaling near the 20. Throws it, incomplete, no one there. Well, they went with the unexpected play. I thought they might try to drive it in there on two runs. But the 49er defense, how about that? Alert, ready for it. They're going to go field goal. Well, it's a little close. He's definitely out of bounds. But remember, once the quarterback breaks the pocket, the rules of hitting do change. You get an extra step. But Joe Flacco was out of bounds that time. That was Sopawaga who hit him after he threw it. 19 yards coming up here from Tucker. It was a good no call, though, in my opinion, though, Jim. Quick gets it down. Field goal is good. 49ers still within one score. Ravens drive all the way down to just outside the one. Manage a field goal. 12 play drive, and in case you're wondering, why didn't the Ravens go for it? Well, they get the field goal, and should it come to this, you force the 49ers to score a touchdown and try to convert the two yeah, from a right. longer distance, and you're trying to get it in from just outside the one. Yeah, it, it was a long one. It was a short two in my eyes, so that, that was a no decision for John Harbaugh. I thought maybe they would run it and look at it and say, we got two chances to score by running it twice, but they elected for the pass. The Niners were ready for it. And James coming out from five deep. I am Bedejo is there at the 24. Let's get a report from Steve Tasker. Well, we saw David Akers get rolled up on that on the missed field goal and then get another attempt and hit it through. He's down trying to warm up and stay loose. I asked him if he was all right. He kind of said, yeah, I'm all right. And I said, are you sure? And he like nodded his head. He still, I've seen him warm up and kick a lot. And I just don't know if he's 100%. It's going to be interesting to see if that's the case or not. to James and go with Gore and a pickup of about five Super Bowl 47 MVP balloting is now open go to NFL.com slash MVP or vote on your mobile device by texting MVP to 55171 vote now it'll be a second and five Between 
Ed Reed and Bernard Pollard. Well, you know when you know a good thrower, when he can fire down the field like this and make it look just like there's no effort. Bernard Pollard has the outside of the receiver that time. He didn't follow him down the field, and Ed Reed is furious because Bernard Pollard got caught looking inside. 32 yards to Moss. They had the right coverage on for that play, oh, not yeah, carried yeah. out well by Pollard. A run, score. Cuts back to the outside on the stiff arm of Graham. And he's got it inside the 20. Well, you have to wonder. Haloti Nata is not in there. One of the best run stoppers in the NFL. And outside that time, what another nice lead block by Miller. It's a deep. Ray Lewis gets blocked inside. But Miller, a defensive end. In college, two years, defensive player of the year from Central Florida in Conference USA, the 49ers drafting and putting the fullback. Go, sir, go, sir. At the 18, there's Kaepernick. And he's hit right there by Ray Lewis. Been a rough month for Ray in the court of public opinion since announcing his retirement. The stories have all resurfaced about Atlanta 2000 when he was charged with a double murder but never convicted struck a plea deal a misdemeanor obstruction of justice well everywhere you go here in New Orleans people either say they admire his play or they despise him really the word hate comes out a lot of times Jim and I'll tell you what it's done though all the words about him it's galvanized this team and they they look they rally around and he is their leader and they rally around him second and seven As Kaepernick forced outside and taken away. Inside the 10, Kaepernick's in for the touchdown. Wow, did he get there in a hurry. There's no doubt I think they'll go for two here to try to tie this game up. But you said it right, Jim. Watching Colin Kaepernick in person, two things jumped out. One, he's so much faster than I that he looks on TV and the strength of his arm just awes you too. But how about this? This is where I love it when he runs. When you play a certain coverage, chase receivers, he sees there's nobody there, he'll take off. Two-point conversion coming up to try and tie the game. Yeah, I don't think you have any choice here, Jim. I think Coach Harbaugh, Jim Harbaugh, knew right away, had in his mind as they were driving the football, we score, we're going for two. You always have to be alert now. Spring the ball. Hey, we got this one. Bubble solid. Bubble solid. To tie the game. Kaepernick. Incomplete. Ed Reed came blitzing in and influenced that throw. That's the longest touchdown run by a quarterback in Super Bowl history. 15 yards, Kaepernick. Super Bowl 47 on CBS Sports is sponsored by the all-new 2014 Kia Sorento crossover. It has an answer for everything. Universal Pictures Fast and Furious in theaters May 24th. And by Samsung Galaxy. The next big thing is here. And here's a look from our Bud Light cam. That missed two-point drive. Reed was very close to being across early. And by failing to tie the game, you've now just put David Akers back into the equation, possibly at the end of this game. As Steve Tasker said, he may not be 100% after getting roughed up physically. And his confidence certainly hasn't been anywhere close to 100% for a while. On the goal line. And out to the 22. It's Walker again on the tackle. Well, Jim, you keep talking about Ed Reed. It's, a, it's in question that he even line up offsides right here on the edge. Boy, if he's not, he's getting every inch of that <laughs> right up to that football, that's for sure. But he got there so quick, Colin Kaepernick had to throw it away. 
Here's the touchdown by Kaepernick. You see the receive of the defenders chasing the receivers, and you think you got him pinned in, Colin Kaepernick, but that speed, it is. For a big, tall guy, he is a quick starter. Justin Smith is not out on that defensive line for this snap. Ricky Jean-Francois is in there for him. On first down, dumping it off to Rice. Give him four. Let's get a report from Solomon Wilcox. Yeah, Jim, Baltimore Ravens running back Bernard Pierce had to be taken into the locker room for evaluation. Now, the team has not told us what the injury is, but he came out, he ran up and down the sideline. He appeared to be healthy, he spoke with the trainers, then he grabbed his helmet, and now it appears as though he's been cleared to go back into the ball game. Thank you, Solomon. Second and six. Rice! He's dropped for a loss by Bowman. Loss of three. What a job by Navarro Bowman. Watch, he reads the play. Oh, boy, he anticipates it. So he saw that formation and must have known it's probably going to be a run to my left. And he shoots the gap and makes the tackle. Navarro Bowman, Patrick Willis, Ahmad Brooks, Alden Smith, all can really run. Pretty stout linebacking core for sure. Justin Smith is back out, lining up right over front, now shifting over a bit. Third and nine. And Flacco. Oh, hold it! Wide. The mark by the flag is out on Culliver. Tangled up with Torrey Smith. First off, what pass protection? Crowds against you. Pass interference. Defense number 29. Foul the foul. Automatic. First down. Well, the coverage was tight on the outside. Culliver against Torrey Smith and gets that hand eye. Oh, he pulls him. So there's a foul even before the football's in the air. Joe Flacco knew it was close outside and he let it go. First San Francisco penalty of this half. Pierce is in now and Pierce. Drives it ahead for a couple, maybe three. Huge first down, though, Jim. Why? The clock be could become an issue here, but it changes field position entirely. And the 49ers wasted a timeout early in the third quarter. It was a 14-yard penalty in all. And now after one run by Pierce, Rice returns, second and eight. Flacco, looking for options, and he's there, and that's Bolden, trying to bulldoze his way near the first. Well, you know, we talk so much about it. How about the extra time? That time? Nobody is open. Nobody. You be the, look down the field, everybody's pretty tight. Joe Flacco looking to his left, and buying time once again. How many times a day has he done that, got outside the pocket, and, and made some good throws? You know, and you watch him throw too, Jim. We had a, some good laughs talking about he's a very natural thrower, has tremendous rhythm. That's why he can he makes it look so easy. And you asked him, who taught me, who taught him to throw? Well, he's really self taught. He's the natural. Yeah, that's right, he is. He's, His dad worked with him a little. A little bit. His dad, who was a running back in college at Pennsylvania, going to measure for the first down. Now, you talked to, to Joe Flacco. I tell you, give Bolden a lot of credit for that first down. He talked to, to Flacco, and he says, if you're talking to me about how to throw a football, I'm not listening. I <laughs> quit listening. And, it, and it's, he just had a, a young son, and he kind of just independently says to us, I'm pretty sure my son's never going to throw the football as good as me. <laughs> yeah. So uh, he was in great spirits when we met him on Thursday morning. And, and of course, he's always been extremely nice and in cordial but his confidence level has definitely gone up his outward appearance even in his press conference he talks a little more and why not his success on the field will give you give you more confidence i think jim harbaugh is looking at possible challenge on the spot san francisco is challenging the rule of the field of a first down wow I, wow I, you got two timeouts i don't agree and you're in danger of losing a precious another one 
Does look short. San Francisco challenging the spot on the field, which had given the Ravens a first down, After or will it? Play, the runner was down short of the line to gain. It will be third down and one half at the 45 and one half yard line. Well, like I said, San right Francisco before the... San Francisco is not charged a timeout. Oh, I'm sorry to mean to interrupt Jerome Boger, but like I said, it's a really good challenge by Jim Harbaugh. <laughs> but he got information upstairs, and it must have been cleared to the coaches. That's why he threw the red flag out there. He does not lose a timeout. That's the big thing that we heard Jerome Boger say. Yeah, it's third and a foot now. With Rice, the single back. They're going to throw for it. Blackwell's pass. Hold in for a catch by Bolden. Unbelievable. Boy, I thought he was making a huge mistake there. Checking off to the pass. He saw the bump and run coverage. Top of your screen. And we've seen it so much. John Harbaugh texts Joe Flacco at the start of last year, the opening day, and said to him, watching a Thursday night game, do you think we can ever get good? and throwing the back shoulder passes because he was watching Aaron Rodgers and Drew Brees. Well, Jim, what's the answer? They're pretty good at it. Now, how many times have we seen in the postseason Bolden make a catch with the defender's arm wedged right in there, and he still is able to grip it and hold on? As Rice has an open out here, Rice. Down at the 28. Running behind Leach. Well, Anquan Bolden always says, I'm stronger than the person covering me. And what a gutsy call by Joe Flacco. That's the one that, if he, he missed that pass, as we watch Ray Rice pick up another first down, he'd have been second guess big time. Vontae Leach, boy, just get out of the way. Moving inside of six minutes. And another set of downs. Give them two. Coming up, the Toyota post-game show. We will have the presentation of the Vince Lombardi Trophy to the NFL champions. Plus, JB, Dan, Shannon, Boomer, and Coach Cower will have their thoughts on Super Bowl 47. All coming up on the Toyota post-game show. What a drive, right? What a drive. The momentum, once again, is kind of going towards the 49ers. The pass interference against yeah. Torrey Smith kept it alive. And... The Ravens taking advantage of it. Yeah, the drive started at the 9.57 mark. Pierce is back in, and they hand it off to him. And they drag him down after one. Well, when Joe Flacco made his third down call, he checked off of a run. He saw the tight coverage. He's not open, throws it behind him. Once again, just, just snatches the football right out of the air, Anquan Bolden does. Third and seven. Did they jump? Ball up in the air and incomplete. Offsides. There are two fouls on the play. Offside, defense, number 55. That penalty is declined. Offside, defense, number 99. Five-yard penalty, replay third down. It'll make it third and two. Oh, that's a big one, too. You know, this 49er defense, they do have a lot of discipline. That time, two guys offside, and you kind of kind of time it. You saw Anquan Bolden, of course, Jim Harbaugh is upset. Anquan Bolden, when you see a receiver go in motion and go back out, you can almost time it out when you know the football is going to be snapped. They just were too anxious. It's a long two for the first. And Flacco goes underneath. Incomplete. Pitta 
Lost his helmet, lost the handle. And Whitner was there defending. You know, Jim, it looked like the football might have been tipped. I'm not sure. But they did a good job co covering Anquan Bolden, who was trying to go in motion and get the quick play to the outside. Carlos Rogers is there. That's a good throw by Joe Flacco. Keep it low, keep it safe. Very catchable ball indeed. So be 38 yards for Justin Tucker. And the rookie from Texas delivers the goods. A drive that took five minutes, 38 seconds. Ends with a field goal. Baltimore by five. Super Bowl 47 on CBS Sports is sponsored by Mercedes-Benz. Visit NBUSA.com slash CLA. And by New Bet Sapphire. German Sapphire Hops. Smooth taste. Well, there was a time in the third quarter at 28 to 6. You never imagined this Super Bowl would come down to the last five minutes. San Francisco has never led. But down by as many as 22. And a touchdown drive away from taking the lead. The last time the Niners had it, they drove 76 yards in less than three minutes. Well, this offense, they're able to come back for a lot of reasons. Their defense can help them out, and they have explosive players on the offensive side. Tight end, wide receiver, and especially the quarterback. You look at this Ravens defense. If they have something new, I would show it. Maybe not the first play or two. You know, play safe. But what I've seen at this 49er offense, I think they'll have a hard time stopping it. Gore. Chugging along. Taking a pile with him. Including Ray Lewis. Picks up seven. We've had a kickoff return for a touchdown. Officially now adjusted to 108. We've had a San Francisco huge rally. And now with 348 to play. Kaepernick and the Niners, second and three. Gonna take off for the first down. You got a defense that's tired too, Jim, and they have no speed up front at all. So Colin Kaepernick, he's going to outrun and squeeze through just about every scenario here. This defensive line, it's big. They can stop the run, but they're not fast. And there's no nada. And there's no Halani Nata, just like we saw on that first run. They just powered it up there for about seven or eight yards. Oh! Joe Flacco's probably seeing if they score. What do we got? Ruger's back in for the Ravens. It's happening. There's play action. And goes down the field. And almost a fingertip grab by Vernon Davis. Beautiful throw. Vernon Davis. This has been in the first quarter. He's going to catch it. Oh, another little same play they scored on earlier, just about. A little crossing of the receivers. Vernon Davis goes out, then turns it up. Gets both hands on it. You just that's one, you know, you gotta make the catch, no doubt. Lay out. It appeared Moss was open also on a post. I thought he was gonna throw it to Randy Moss. I like his choice though. Second and ten. And Kaepernick goes down the middle again. He's got pressure. Shaking off more tackles. And finally. Falls at the 40, a pickup of 24. How was that throw? My gosh, I'm just, I'm really literally mesmerized by some of these passes today. He looks it off, and he knew, I think he knew right from the start, it was his own coverage, so he looks it off, and then comes back to the end cut. He looked off the inside linebacker, so nobody got underneath Michael Crabtree. Kaepernick goes over 300 with that throw. 
Eight plays over 20 oh. yards on the game. And Gore. Pass the pass play. And Gore inside the 20. Gore to the 10. And Gore is bounced out of bounds. At about the seven-yard line. Give a lot of credit to this offensive line. The left side, Joe Staley. Yupati, number 77. They are all in shape. The blocks down inside. The pull around. Oh, man, and Frank Gore, nice job of going outside. You heard Shannon Sharp in the pregame talk about the best in-shape team he's seen. That's the 49ers. This is a 33-yard run, and it's a first and goal. This time the Ravens defend it. This is Michael James. Mm. No Baltimore in a tough in a situation here. Three timeouts. I would have called a timeout right before this, right after that play ended, because you're going to let the 49ers now, Jim, take the take the clock all the way down to the two-minute warning. Yeah, Kaepernick's already heading over to the sideline. And we reach the two-minute warning in what has turned out to be a thriller down in New Orleans. Coming up, the Toyota post-game show, the presentation of the Lombardi Trophy, and JB and the crew with their thoughts on this most exciting Super Bowl. Coming up, the Toyota post-game show. Second and goal on the way. From the five. From the gun. Rolling out. Kaepernick looking, looking, firing incomplete. Crabtree. Good defense at time. They come with the, a group, a, a bunch group by the 49ers. Three receivers in there. They roll the quarterback out and nothing there. When you roll the quarterback out, it always sounds great. But where do you think the defense is going to go? They're going to roll with you. John Harbaugh walking down near the line of scrimmage on that sideline. Third and goal with 155 to play. And the flag first. Play a game. Timeout, San Francisco. This will be a 30-second timeout. The timeout was called before the play clock expired. Now just in timeout time. number two, San Francisco. And the Niners have one left. You know what? I wouldn't even blame Colin Kaepernick if he let it run out because there's a lot going on down there. I don't know if you can try to sort it out and still look at the play clock. But a good job by Jim Harbaugh managing the game from the sideline. How close was it? There you go. He knows it's in trouble. That's a, a good job by Coach Harbaugh. Wonder, wonder. Third and goal. Now from under center. Kaepernick, wins it, Clown, smash, incomplete, is the call. That was Crabtree, who got Wallet, Jimmy Smith, and Corey Graham over there. And now it's fourth and goal. Kind of come back to where we started the game, it seems like, Jim. You're talking about the, the red zone or near the goal line defense by the Baltimore Ravens, one of the best in the NFL all year long. And they... Make a stand here. Or can the Niners take the lead? 150 to play and fourth and goal. Anthony lost it in the air. No flag. Incomplete. Coach 
Coach Jim wants a holding call, but he doesn't get it. I thought he might call timeout. It looked like a blitz look. The Ravens just said, we're going to make you beat. Beat us with pressure. And there was, Jim, a lot of contact in the end zone. And Kaepernick had to get rid of it, rid of it quick. Danell Ellerby was coming untouched to the quarterback. Trying to hook up with Crabtree, with Jimmy Smith and Ed Reed on the coverage. And now the ball goes back to Baltimore, and San Francisco can stop the clock only once. Well, when you watch it there in slow motion, I, I got to say that's a good no call. I know there's contact, but Crabtree was pushing off just as much. Jimmy Smith did a good job sitting inside and was going to make sure that all you were going to get a chance to throw was a fade to the back corner of the end zone. Timeout just called by the Ravens, and here it is again. Contact inside five yards, the ball's in the air. Well, the ball was snapped at the five-yard line. There's still contact two yards into the end zone. Well, I, you know, I'm going to go on this theory. I still think it's a good no call because late in the game, and, and when I look at what the Ravens did, I, I did not like, you know, well, there's a good grab by both hands by Jimmy Smith. The more angles I see, the more confused I get. I think we just hard to throw a penalty in that situation. Now the Ravens. Nice. Who fumbled earlier in this game. And now the Niners take a final timeout. Well, let's do the math on this with 142 to play. Well, just give it, you know, 45 seconds of play. That's what you think of. Running the play, will they start the clock again? You know, they, you come back to a gym. Well, a lot of things. Uh, they had a lot of time to overcome the fact that they wasted the timeout early in the third quarter. And again, would they love to have that now? I'm sure they would. So, it... it, it you look at this Ravens offense, of course they're going to run the football. And when they punt it, it might give the 49ers a chance to get one or two throws into the end zone. Jim Harbaugh is not going to let go of that no call for a long time. When they met the brothers a season ago, he was still after that game, according to his brother, still talking about, well, we should have done this. We should have gotten that call. Pierce is the running back. Pierce. Darts ahead for one. Good job by Pierce, getting an extra couple and seconds off the clock. There's going to be a lot of controversy about this call. And here we go. Fourth down, it's in the... And you always hear, you got to make the plays in these championship games. The officials, are, and it's just human nature. Late in the game, they're not going to throw the flag. You've got to get it done. So I see the pulling of the jersey, but also I see Michael Crabtree with his left hand pushing off too. The Niners ran three straight plays in Crabtree's direction. They had four snaps inside the 10. Here's the third and eight with Leach. And there you can see the differential play clock to game clock's nine seconds. Two good runs. Leach staying up, taking a couple seconds, and the same with Bernard Pierce. Any reason to take a safety here? thinking no I would not I would punt it and 
And now the timeout by Baltimore. Well, let's think about it. You bring up a great point. You take a safety, 34-31. You punt the football. Free kick from the 20. No, I would not do it. Pretty tight which way you go, Jim. You know, really, if you take the safety, I know Jerry Rosberg, the special teams coach, that's what they're talking about. You take the, the football, have it snapped, and then run around for a few seconds. Buskin is the returner, given the chance, as we've already witnessed in this game, he can be dangerous. Ed Reed, another local kid from New Orleans, his dream was for a year to come back home and play here in the Super Bowl. He had an interception in this game. And there's Ginn. to go. 49ers weren't ready for that. That call. Nobody going after the punter. So what a good call by you seeing it, thinking of the situation, and a good job of executing it. Cook really did, didn't he? he took eight seconds before eight seconds. he stepped out of bounds. You know, it prevents the punt return. That's probably the biggest reason why you do it. Jim Harbaugh talks about his kicker and punter, how they're both pretty good athletes. Now they get to either punt the ball or kick it off from the looks like the 20-yard line. So they'll kick it from the 20. There is a rule buried deep in the rule book. You can fair catch and get a free kick. Exactly. The fair catch, free kick. No question. which would then give you an unrushed attempt. That's right. And a field goal. See that about once every 30 or 40 years. Timeout called by the Ravens. That's a good try, Jim, if you... Well, he'd have to shank the punt not to get it far enough down there or whatever. But... It's another situation for John Harbaugh and Jerry Rosberg to go over. Maybe you kick a line drive where they can't fair catch it, and now it only comes down to the last play of the game. And thanks to our executive producers of the NFL on CBS, Sean McManus and Merrill Bryant, coordinating producer of the NFL on CBS, Lance Barrow, and our director, Mike Arnold. Well, you got Sam Cook who's going to punt it away here. Of course, the Ravens had some issues. Special teams coverage out of Denver with a kick return and a punt return for touchdowns by Trendon Holiday. And he booms this one. That takes the... Fair catch, free kick out of play, and it's Ginn. Ginn to the 40, still on his feet at the 50, and the Ravens have won it 34-31. The Super Bowl belongs 
to Baltimore. Owner Steve Pashati with his head coach. Joe Flacco is the game's most valuable player, and he joins an illustrious group of quarterbacks who tasted Super Bowl glory for the very first time in New Orleans. Roger Staubach, Terry Bradshaw, Brett Favre, Tom Brady, all had their first Super Bowl victory right here in this great city. And now add Joe Flacco to that list. Jackie and Jack Harbaugh. It's a team that overcame adversity so many times this year, Phil. Yeah, they sure did. Injuries, no doubt. Many key players were hurt, Jim. And what a job by Joe Flacco today. Joe Cool, no doubt, under pressure, made a lot of big throws. The adversity they faced tonight was to somehow rekindle the energy after it had been taken literally out of the building. And they do it. The Baltimore Ravens claim Super Bowl 47. And we'll have the Vince Lombardi presentation when we continue on CBS in a moment. Post game show aerial coverage provided by Bud Light. And once again, the score from Super Bowl 47 in New Orleans. The Ravens win it 34-31 over the 49ers. And a reminder that coming your way next on CBS, an all-new episode of Elementary. And remember also that our post-game coverage will continue on CBS Sports Network. Check your listings or go to cbsports.com for the channel number. Right now, let's send it to public address announcer Alan Roach with more. Go. Ladies and gentlemen, as a member of the Chicago Bears, this defensive end led the NFL with 17 sacks during the 1985 season, which culminated with his being named the MVP of Super Bowl XX, played here at the Superdome. Please welcome NFL Hall of Famer Richard Dent and the Vince Lombardi Trophy. Thank you, Richard Dent, here with Dick Cass and Ozzie Newsom and Commissioner Goodell. It's time for the presentation of the Vince Lombardi Trophy. 
Okay, Baltimore fans, this is what you're waiting for. Five straight playoff appearances, and now you reach the mountaintop. Steve, Coach Harbaugh, Ozzie, Dick, congratulations on a great championship. The Ravens are world champions. Steve Machati, what can you say about your team and your coaches? Uh, resilience, like all great teams have. Um, I want to thank the, uh, the city of New Orleans for what is just a spectacular way to celebrate. I've never seen anything like it. And uh, to my partners, Dick, Ozzie, John, and all our fans back in Baltimore, we're bringing another one home for you. Hand off that trophy to Coach John Harbaugh. As he looks down to O.J. Brigance and make sure that he realizes that this is also a part of him. O.J. I'll tell you all the Ravens fans, collectively, as loud as we possibly can, for O.J. Brigance, a big cheer for O.J. How did your team do it? It's been about overcoming adversity all year long. You had the power outage here. The momentum shifted. How did you guys do it? Right, Jim. How could it be any other way? You know, we talk to our guys all the time. It's never pretty. It's never perfect. But it is us. And that was us today, just the way we do it. How hard was it going against your brother out there? It was really hard. And I'll tell you, the end of the game was the hardest thing I've ever experienced. What did you say to him? I told him I, told him I loved him. And what did he say? He said, congratulations. John, congratulations to you. Super Bowl champions. We're looking for Joe Flacco, the MVP of the Super Bowl. Joe. little um, symbolic passing of the torch there as Ray Lewis slaps you on the back and you really have in this postseason become the man for the Ravens and the future tell me about this performance by your team and winning the world championship oh it's unbelievable I tell you what we don't make it easy but um, that's the way the city of Baltimore is that's the way we are um, You know, we did this for them back home. We had a great send-off, and we can't wait to get back there for the parade, so. Lift that trophy in the air one more time here, Joe Flacco. There you go. And hand it off to Ray Lewis. Baltimore! <laughs> How do you describe it, Ray? How do you describe it going out as a champion? It's simple. When God is for you, who can be against you? It's no greater way as a champ to go out on your last ride with the men that I went out with, with my teammates. And you look around this stadium, and Baltimore, Baltimore, we coming home, baby. We did it. It has been an unbelievable ride, and that trophy is heading back to Baltimore. Congratulations, Ray Lewis, and all the Baltimore Ravens, and we'll continue our coverage here from Super Bowl 47 on CBS in just a moment.